I want to take some of this fucking ore. I got sulfide right there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. Now, for a lot of you people out there that don't know what iron pyrite is, and there's some right there. It's locked up in the host rock. You see that? Iron pyrite is a sulfide of iron. You got other sulfides like galena, which is a sulfide of lead. But this, this is what we're looking at. I'm going to show you how to tell the difference between this and the real deal, which is gold. How do you know the difference between the two? Gold is super soft, and iron pyrite's really brittle. On most tests, it registers at a 6 to 6.5 as far as brittle. And gold is 2 to 2.5, if you guys know anything about geology. I got a whole bunch of iron pyrite in a pan here, and I got a piece of gold here. Now come here, take a look at this. I'm gonna get my jeweler's loop out, so you can take a look at this good looking gold here. That's the real deal right there, that's gold. See how that's all flaky? That's pyrite, and it's kinda got a brassy look to it. That ain't no gold. And when you go to chip on it, it's gonna come right off, flake off in your hand. See how brassy that is? Now, gold has been known to travel with pyrite, so it'd be worth to crush it all up, make sure there's no gold in there. You get yourself a pocket knife or a hammer. I like a hammer, because it never lies. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get yourself what you think is a piece of gold, and you're gonna put it down here on something hard. Now come here, take a look at this. I got a piece of pyrite, and I got a piece of gold. You see that? Now look what happens to the iron pyrite. When I hit it, see it broke into a million pieces. The gold, nothing. It just keeps getting flatter and flatter. I'll show it to you again in case you missed it. Look at that. It's hammer time. All right, see that? It looks like gold, but it ain't. But I tell you what, you lightly tap that, and it shatters because it's so brittle. But that gold, I could pound on it all day long. It just gets thinner and thinner, see that? Gold comes in an assortment of colors, but the only ones you have to really worry about is the three basics. You got red, which means copper's in there. You got white, which means the silver's in there. They call that electrum. And then of course that nice buttery gold that's pure that comes from California, Australia. Now of course there's other colors out there and I'll leave a link down below so you can take a look for some of you people who are curious about that. Now I'm gonna crush it down and I'm gonna get the free mill gold out of it first. Then I'm gonna capture all the sulfide and then I'm going to roast those sulfides and then I'm going to smelt those sulfides and I'm going to get a, a pour out of it. Technically you should have a jaw crusher first. That'll break your rock down so you can get it in here. And then from here we got the K&M crusher to crush it down into a fine powder because that's what you're going to need. And then from there we're going to take it out of the bucket and we're going to roll it over here to the gold cube. Free mill gold and the sulfides will be trapped in here. Then I'll pan out the free mill gold and get the sulfides. Then I'll bring the sulfides over here to this thing. This is called a Miller table right here. Now I know you guys seen Miller tables before, but I like this one. This is a black scorpion, and it's from Mother Load Prospecting Supplies up in Canada. And I like it because it's got a different design than I've seen on other Miller tables. And it's got this little catch riffle down at the very end, just in case you might not have it set up properly. It's kind of like insurance on the end of your table. After we get all the sulfides off of this, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna roast, and then we're gonna smelt. This is a, a KK8. And we got this one from GPK. What makes this one interesting is, is the burner here. This is an interesting design. It uses a Venturi effect. And it's really, really effective and efficient. And real quiet too. It doesn't make a roar or nothing. And you barely need any type of propane to make this thing work. And it gets up to 2,000 degrees like that. And I like that. And you're going to need that if you're going to be doing any smelting. And the neat thing about this one is it's got a pyrometer on it. See that on the back? That's right. That way you know what the temperature is on the inside. Now, I'm going to leave a link to all the manufacturers of this equipment down below. And that way, if you want one of your own, you can. <laughs> I like feeding them dry because it's less work. I got my gold pan down here to catch uh, my tailings. And I'll pan that to see if anything is coming out of my tails. Now remember, when you fire up these gold cubes, you got to make sure you run a brush over every tray when it's wet. You don't want any air bubbles in there because gold won't stick if there's a pocket of air there. I got the water shut off. Right there where my fingers, there's one there. 
Get in there real close. You can see it. There's one there, and there's a little tiny one right next to it. See that? All right, let's pop this thing off and take a look inside. I'm curious now. Remember, most of your gold is going to be in the, the, the number one tray. See? Oh, yeah, look at that. Come here, get in there real close. Really tiny piece right there. You see that where my finger is? There's one there. There's one there. And there's a little tiny one there. And there's a little tiny speck right there. Get on in there, take a look at that. Ooh, look how tiny that one is. That's super tiny. That's like fly poop, super fly poop. Ooh, man, I'm excited. It's all around the top. I'm gonna go ahead and pan this out real quick. And then I'll get rid of the uh, free meal gold. And then of course I'll keep the sulfides. Now, because you're working with sulfides, you're gonna do all your trays. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. You gotta be careful with sulfides. As far down as I wanna go. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, I got some gold. Look at all that fine gold in there. Holy cow. Got some chunky gold in there too from the mill. And see all the sulfides in there? See that? That's all sulfide. And then I got little tiny specks of gold there. I got some larger chunks there. And I got gold all the way down here, really fine gold too, see that? Little tiny, tiny pieces, look at that, all up in there. All right, so I'm gonna snuff for those out and I'm gonna keep the sulfides and I'm gonna put the sulfides in this guy right here. Now I got most of my free mill gold out, now I got just sulfides. And what I've been doing is, is every time I run a batch, I put them in here. Just like that. With these Miller tables, what you want to do is you want to classify down to about minus 20 mesh. And all that means is anything that will fall through a 20 mesh screen is what you want to put on here. You don't want anything too chunky. What you're going to do is you're going to feed it wet. That's really important. Don't feed it dry. And you're going to feed it with a little spoon. Now it comes with two brushes where you can gently move the material around like this. And as you'll see, you get in there close, you'll see where the sulfides are hanging together here at the top. See that? And look, I got a little piece of gold right there too. See it? There's a piece of gold there. Piece of gold there. Most of those are sulfides. See all that sulfide in there? And then what you do is you take your brush and you're going to brush it up into this little groove right here. See there? There's a groove here and there's a groove there. Now I'm gonna show you another trick. All right, now see my sulfides right there? There's a line of sulfide there and a little bit of sulfide right there. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your snuffer bottle, see that? You're gonna have a 45 degree cut on that and what you're gonna do is you're gonna suck all this stuff up, see that? Blow water out, suck it up. Now the same thing's gonna happen up in these two little dwells. You're gonna go up there, blow your water out then you're going to go over there and you're going to suck them clean. See that? Blow the water out. Make sure you're not blowing away any gold or sulfides. Suck them clean. See how that works? You're using your snuffer bottle to do all the work. How do I know what angle I should put this thing at? And how fast should my water flow be? Well, the rule of thumb is that from the end of the table to here should be tilted by about one inch. I found out the hard way that depending on what you put in there, is you're gonna have to work with the angle. And you can see how these little wing nuts here, you can adjust them and it'll raise or drop this Miller table. And then you got a little valve here, it's a little ball valve. And you can increase or decrease water flow, that's really important. If I was working with gold, of course I'd probably increase the water flow because gold's a lot heavier. But in this case, I'm working with sulfides and sulfides are not that heavy. So I gotta be real careful that when you're running it, I highly recommend you put some jet dry in your water just to break the surface tension. And that way, super, super fine gold will drop out and it'll stay there. It won't try to float along the top because I've seen some super fine gold floating on the top before. And yeah, gold does float. Woo, look at that, I got all my sulfides in there, yeah. Now I'm gonna go over this KK8 
and explain a few things about it and of course the whole process of smelting because uh, there's a lot of information I think you should know. Now there's all different ways that you can roast these sulfides and remember what you're trying to do is you're trying to oxidize them okay. When you're using fluxes you're either going to oxidize or reduce and I found in the past that if I use clay crucibles that's best to oxidize in and then my graphite crucibles that's best to reduce in. I've seen some guys they'll take a clay crucible and they'll put a screen about a third of the way up in there and then they'll put the sulfides in there and then they'll dry the temperature up to about a thousand degrees and let it sit in there for about an hour. Now a lot of other guys what they'll do is they'll put oxidizers in there to help speed up the process because you're trying to oxidize it remember. Some guys will put borax and sodium nitrate in there a three to one ratio. That's one way to do it. Another way is to put assay sand in there which is silica and that'll increase the amount of oxygen you have in there. Now there's a company out there called Action Mining Company. I'll leave a link down below and they sell a flux a special flux and it's designed to eliminate the roasting process. You just dump it in, put it in your crucible, put a couple iron nails in there and remember the nails are going to attract the sulfur away. Well I ain't gonna do all that. All I'm gonna do is like the old timers used to do. Put it right in here in my KK8 and I'm gonna drive it up to about a thousand degrees and then I'm just gonna let it roast that way. I put a little bone ash in there on top of my pedestal and what it does is it minimizes if I have a spill and it, and it keeps the uh, crucible from sticking to the pedestal. Now there's a special way that you fire these guys up, okay? You're barely gonna crank this open. Turn the gas on a little bit. You hear how it's churning? It's not supposed to do that. You're gonna throttle up and down until the combustion is here, not here. There. Now I'm gonna idle back on that because you don't need a lot to get it up to a thousand degrees. I'm gonna let that warm up just a little bit. Look at that. See how black that is? And then we're going to put it in a crucible, put some flux in there. All right, so here's our sulfides. Pour them in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this flux, which is Hank Chapman flux. And I'm going to put a two to one ratio in there by volume, not by weight. And then I'm going to add a thinner in there too, just for fun. And maybe some sodium carbonate too. And a pinch. All right, so you're going to shake that up really good. You want all of your material surrounded by flux. Then you pour it in your crucible. I'm gonna go ahead and warm this guy up before I put him in there, okay? It usually takes about five minutes to warm up. And then this is supposed to sit in there for about an hour, okay? And then when it's done, we'll pull it out and then we'll come over here and we'll put it in a conical mold. I recommend these because all the gold is going to go to the very tip and then all the slag will flow over and into this cast iron pot right here. Alright, I think she's warmed up. You want to center it as much as you can. And then we'll let that cook for about an hour. Ta-da! Mm, that's what I'm talking about. There it is right there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, that's nice looking gold chunk. <laughs>